So now we have all of our second derivatives, and we were doing that because we were trying to figure out what to do with Maxwell's derivation where he combines some of his equations or some of the equations to make uh, 1 over mu naught epsilon naught del cross del cross b equals minus d2b dt2. So now we know what this is. And by the way, we did it in Cartesian coordinates where all the unit vectors always point in the same direction no matter where you go. If we did it in spherical coordinates or cylindrical coordinates, it's much more complicated because the unit vectors change on you. If I showed you del cross del cross vector field in spherical coordinates, you wouldn't believe me. It would scare you. You would, you would drop the class, so I'm not going to show it to you. Okay, so this then, del cross del cross b, we know is the gradient of the divergence b uh, minus the vector Laplacian of b, that garbage term, and we bring this back over here. So minus mu naught epsilon naught d2 b dt2. And we look at that, and look at this. This is 0. Right? There are no magnetic monopoles, Cabrera's law. That term is 0. So we're left with what ends up being the wave equation we're looking for, del squared b, the vector Laplacian of b, which is not a real thing, mu naught epsilon naught d2 b dt2. So Maxwell was playing around with his equations, and he derived what he recognized as a wave equation. When we did a wave on a string, we found that if you had an equation where you have a second spatial derivative equals a constant times a second time derivative, the solution is a wave. So this is indeed a wave equation. If we were to do this whole thing with the E field, we could. You just substitute different ones, you take a derivative of something else, and you get del squared E is mu naught epsilon naught d2e uh, dt2. And, um, and that's also wave equation for e. Like that. And this is why it's called Maxwell's equations. So just by modifying Ampere's law, that wasn't quite enough. He also discovered that they make waves. And when he did, he said, well, how fast do they go? Well, we know from working with waves that the velocity would be 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. And he knew that was really fast. But I believe the story is he was on vacation and he didn't have his notes with him to tell him the exact values for mu naught and epsilon naught. But he realized that's really fast. And there's one very famous wave that goes really fast, and that's light. And at the time, nobody was really thinking light was an electromagnetic wave. Right? Electricity and magnetism were being merged by Maxwell. But optics was this other thing. They weren't even sure if light was a wave at all. Maybe it was a particle. But then he realized light is an electromagnetic wave. Because once you get the numbers and you plug them in, and you can do it with our numbers, it's about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this is how you get from electromagnetism to light. And then you can go crazy and go into optics. And you can start to study what kind of equations or what kind of waves will solve those equations. And the most famous it is basically an electromagnetic plane wave which would look something like this. If it were propagating along the z-axis, it would have maybe its E-field um, would be along here, uh, along, uh, let's see if this is, uh, oh, crud, I don't see, I've, uh, x cross, yeah, this is why. If it might have its E-field along the x and its B-field along y, and they would both vary sinusoidally in time uh, and in phase, right? So it would come down. This would come down like that, and then this one would get smaller and go like that. And the E and B field just oscillate in and out of phase, or well, they're in phase together, in and out, in and out, traveling at the speed of light. So, and then the E field is constant over the XY plane. So that's a solution you start with, and you pretty much do all of optics from there. And it all got started when Maxwell combined his equations to find a wave equation.